Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a geometry lesson to share with you today. We're using our live education Waldorf curriculum for geometry and today we're going to work on the star ladder. So this one is a little bit more involved than our previous lessons. We are still going to work with five division of a circle and I do have a slow tutorial on how to do that if you need a little bit more time in mastering that part of the geometry. I'm using our main lesson books by A Child's Dream. These measure nine and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. And I'm going to set my compass to about three inches. And I'm going to eyeball not quite the center of the page. I want it just a little bit higher than the center. So I'm going to, to do my circle. And now we want to do our five division. So we are going to place our straight edge right through the center and draw our diameter. Next, we want to extend our compass larger than the circle, and we're going to do arcs on both sides of the circle. Reposition our compass to the top and do that again so that you have two arcs that cross. That one didn't cross quite as well, but there we go. And now we're going to take our straight edge and we're going to connect those two arcs and we're going to draw another diameter right through the center of the circle. Now we've divided up into four, but we need to divide it up into five. We're gonna place our compass at the top of that first diameter, swing an arc, and connect where those arcs cross our circle. It's going to cross over the top radius. Now we wanna place our compass at that top radius and extend it down to our diameter on the right side and swing an arc right below and where it crosses the radius at the bottom that gives us our five divisions so now we can reposition our compass all the way around the circle we do want to double check sometimes you're off by just a little bit you want to make sure that you are accurate because we're going to be needing to make sure that our pentagon is accurate for every other step of this process. So I'm just double checking here just to make sure that it is indeed accurate because it was off just by a little bit. So you don't want to erase any of your arcs or lines just yet until you make sure that your compass is exactly set to your five divisions. Now it's time to use your straight edge to connect each of those arcs, those points, in order to create your pentagon. Now you can erase all of those extra arcs and circles and lines, and now we're going to put our triangle right at the top part of our pentagon with the base at the lower part of our pentagon. I'm going to label this A and B. Next, I want to take my compass and set it to point B. You want to make sure that your compass measures from point A to B. Then we're going to swing it up above B and mark the line, set our compass to A, swing it up again, and where those two arcs cross the line, we're going to set our straight edge and we're going to draw a line right across the top. Now we want to label those two points E and F. Next we're going to set our straight edge at point B, connect it with the point on the pentagon and draw a line do the same thing for the other side with point A and the edge of the pentagon and now we have C and D and across right through our triangle and where that point is we've labeled it X. Now we want to connect X with F and with E and now we're going to connect E to D and D to C and C to F, and there we have our star that sort of nestled into the star that's going to emerge at the bottom as well as at the top. Now our compass is still set at the distance between A and B, but now we've set it at C and D and swung arcs below A and B, and where those arcs cross, we're going to label it Y. And we're going to start with Y and A and then Y and B and we're creating another star formation that's below our first star but how do we connect these different lines in order to create our star because it is in there we just need to now connect the lines together to create our star we've created a pentagon now we want to connect line or point C to Y and D to Y, and there we go. We have another star 
they're upside down stars and you can see the pentagons look like they're facing upwards. Okay, so now we're going to work on this top section here. Now you can keep going as long as your accuracy and precision hold, but if you find that you're not able to be accurate anymore, then that's as small as you can go. Okay, so now we're going to draw a tiny little star right inside that pentagon. This is optional, but you have a tiny little pentagon inside this larger star, and you can connect every other point of that pentagon to do this tiny little star before we move up to the final star that we'll do at the very top. So I'm just connecting the different points rather than labeling them. You just want to go every other point in order to create that star. And once you create that star, you'll see that there's another tiny little pentagon inside that, but it's too tiny to make another star. Next, we want to set our compass on D and make it small enough so that it's the distance between D and F. So we've reduced our compass size so that it's between D and F. Next, set your compass on F and swing it above E, and then do the same by setting your compass on E and swinging it above F. So now you're going to have two arcs that are above E and F, and we want to connect those two arcs. It is a little bit challenging to see where they cross the line, but then we can go ahead and set our straight edge on those two arcs, draw a line, and now we can connect these points with our new pentagon, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's right up there with the line going across from E to F. So we're going to go ahead and connect those points, every other one, until we can get our star design. And there's that last piece that we need from the top left side all the way down to the bottom. And same with the top right side, right down into the bottom where you can see now this star that's nestled in the next star and into the next star with with three stars looking like they're cascading down. I'm going to try to squeeze in one more star at the very top following the same technique that I used previously. You do need to readjust your compass. It is really tight working at that top part, but I'm really glad that I made it work because I think in the end it looks really amazing to have that tiny little star right at the very top. So we're going to be keeping the basic structure of the triangle. And in our main lesson book, it does have us erasing the pentagon and the circle. But for now, I'm keeping it, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep it in the end or whether I'm going to erase them. Now, I decided to go with rainbow colors, and then as I started coloring this in, I ended up changing my ideas a little bit so that each star, the, the basically the lower point, if it looks like an upside down star, is basically touching the pentagon of the next star. And so I wanted those colors to be the same. Whatever the star points were on the previous star, I want that color to be the color of the pentagon so that you got sort of an ombre color effect from yellow all the way to a deep purple burgundy color at the very bottom. So I've got yellow at the very top, like a, a golden yellow and then a golden orange all the way down to red orange red and then finally the pink at the bottom and i really like the way that it turned out i love this color combination i think it's really beautiful now at this point i could just leave the design as it is but i decided to color in the pentagon and the circle and you lose some of your precision when you do this because the color pencils are a little bit thicker but i do really love this variation in the end and i love the way that it turned out I hope that you enjoyed this look at the star ladder geometry lesson. I hope that you give it a try. I think it looks amazing in the end. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. It has more details with all of our lessons as well as resources and books that we have used for this main lesson block. You can find the link to that blog post in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram and now on TikTok at Pepper and Pine.